Welcome into the startup van. Yeah, it's great to see you guys. Finally, I'm here in the startup yes, van. Yeah. Yes, sorry for the delay on getting you in the van, <laughs> yeah. but so, you're here. Yeah, so I've come and I've, you know, when we, I saw you guys in London, I was sort of hanging around the van, but uh, we didn't really have time to do it there. So it's great that we've finally managed to do it in Atlanta. So for any of our viewers watching now, introduce yourself. So I'm Steve Hare. I'm the uh, Chief Financial Officer of Sage. Big, big job. Uh, it's a big job, yeah. There's quite a bit going on in Sage. You know, we're uh, it's an exciting time. You know, we're we're out there doing these types of events. So this yep. is like the seventh um, event that we've had. You guys have, got, I think, gone to most of those events. Um, so there's a lot going on. You know, a lot of engagement with customers. We're trying to sign up new customers, as well as you know, enhance the uh, experience of our existing customers. So it's a great time. Brilliant, brilliant. Because the reason we wanted to get you in the van as well was we want to talk money. Right, because I love money. Good, good. We all love money. We all love money. Most of the startups that we interview and we come across, they love what they do, right? They've come up with a really good idea, but they don't have an account head on them, mm. right? And they always have cash flow issues, and um, they they also forget to invoice people because they're so busy in what they're doing. Mm. Let's just have a discussion around that. Yeah, it's, it's a great point. And I think actually products like we, that like Sage Live are actually designed to resolve things like this. I always use the example of the plumber. You know, I have a uh, plumber comes around to my house. He does some work for me. Um, and, you know, he goes off. He's a busy guy. Yeah. It takes a few weeks before he gets around to sending me an invoice. And then, you know, sometimes I forget to pay him. So from the time he's done his work, you know, sometimes it can be four, five, six yeah. weeks before he gets paid. You know, with the latest accounting applications, that can take place in the moment. That guy who's mm. doing work for you can issue that invoice from his phone. You can accept it there and then, and yeah. you can press a button and pay him. So instead of all that cash flow being outstanding, it can happen in the moment. Yeah. There's plenty of examples of successful businesses that have grown really quickly, but because they haven't kept an eye on cash, mm -hmm. yeah. they go bust, right? You don't go bust for any other reason then you run out of money, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cash is really, really king when you're running a small business. Yeah. I have a little phrase I use internally. You know, a sale is a gift until the cash is received. There's no yeah. point in recording really all good. these sales in your books if yeah. you're not actually getting the cash yeah. from them because yeah. that's what you need to run your business. Yeah, it's, it's so true. Though, it is. It? It's funny. You hear startups kind of saying sometimes, you know, connecting with your customers is the most important thing and social is the most important thing and they yeah. go on to it. But nothing is more important than yeah. money because yeah. you're going to fail unless you and, we, and we have a policy of, you know, we, we pay our um, suppliers on time. But, you know, as a, as a small business, often, you know, you, sometimes you can win these big contracts, you're working yeah. with big businesses, and then suddenly you find that you're not getting paid for 60, 90 days. But you've paid all your wages out. You've yeah, paid, you know, you've yeah. paid for your raw materials. It's like you guys traveling around, you know, mm -hmm. you have to pay yeah. for your petrol, you have to run the van, all these sort of things. Yeah. And then if people are not giving you your money, you're not getting your income, and then also, you know, the banks suddenly are like, well, we don't want to lend you any money, because yeah. it's yeah. harder these days to get an overdraft course, and to get loans this, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So keeping a close eye on that cash and making sure you're on top of what's coming in, mm -hmm. what's going out, and yeah. the timing of that, so you're forecasting. It's not just what's in the bank today, but what's, what's it look like in a week's time? What's it look like in two weeks' time? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you get unexpected, you hit the wall and suddenly yeah. there's no money to pay the supplies. Yeah. Yeah. Something positive that I think came out of the recession was that it kind of cut out a lot of this kind of credit. Yeah. Right. So mm. there was plenty of companies that went out of business because the companies that owed them Abs money absolutely, went yeah. out of business. Yeah. Right? I heard one or two things now where people are saying like, um, they send them out an invoice or they kind of go, these are our payment terms. And if you want credit, use your company credit card. Yeah. Mm. That exactly. way you're, you're getting your 30 days yeah. Yeah. on your yeah. card, but yeah. I'm getting paid on time. Exactly. And I think more and more what you want is this, as I say, in the moment. So back to my back to my plumber example. You know, yeah. that, that plumber's in your house, you've agreed you're gonna pay him 150 pounds, and so you do it there and then. You yeah. transfer it either as, as a bank transfer or you, you he takes credit card payment yeah. from, from you or mm. you, you use something like Apple Pay or PayPal or whatever. Yeah. But let's get the transaction done in the moment. Yeah, so that, yeah. so that, as a, as a, as the business person, I'm up to date. I've got my money for the services that yeah. I've provided, and we haven't got this whole delay thing because it isn't just the delay; it's all the chasing. You know, as a business person, I don't have time yeah. to chase. Yeah, you go, hey, where's where's my money? Of where's course. my money? Yeah. You know, how much easier is it if it just all happens in the moment? Could there's a really sorry, we can say that. Yeah, just just a quick one. Could could we get a piece of advice? Just coming into my head there. Mm -hmm. We interviewed a startup with the very first event we ever did with Sage nearly a year ago and they've just got a million pounds sterling in funding. 
um, and it was a social media company. And but the founders were quite young. Yeah. And we were quite shocked to see seven months later we went to check in like we do with every single yeah. startup. Yeah. And they had gone bust. Yeah. Yeah. And so what advice would you give to a young founder because a lot of them watching that have just got funding yeah. and chunky funding yeah. with a couple of hundred yeah. thousand pounds or over a million yeah. pounds yeah. what advice would you give a young you person? have to be you, it, it doesn't matter whether you're a startup or whether you're a large uh, company you need to be really thoughtful about where are you putting your funds mm. yeah. and what is it that that's going to drive in terms of a return keep your fixed costs low yeah. right the last thing you want as a startup is a big office lots of staff on high salaries, because yeah. then you've got that fixed overhead base, which is just eating into your funding. Actually, what you want to do with that funding is use it to go to fund specific projects or yeah. specific things, specific campaigns, that you know will then drive some sort of return, right? Yeah. Because you can burn through, I mean, a million pounds to a young person sounds like a huge amount of money. Yeah. You start going hiring staff and taking a big office and all this sort of stuff, you get through a million pounds really quickly yeah, of course, and yeah. not necessarily show a great return for it, mm. right? So it's all about that return on invested capital. What are, if, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna put 50,000 pounds into something, what am I gonna get for it? Mm. Yeah, I also think another one that's really important and a lot of startups and even companies should do this, I'm sure a lot of them are, but just because there's money in your account doesn't mean it's yours. No, right? exactly. And this is where the second bank account comes in. This has been driven into me since I've been grown up the whole time. My dad started up his own business and he's given myself and Graham mm. huge advice when it comes yeah. to, to yeah. monies. And you need to open up the second bank account for that money, yeah. tax money, whatever yeah. it might be. Exactly. Put it in there because it's not yeah. yours. Exactly. Mm. You know, and it, it, it people kind of get lost in the moment when they look at, at their bank account online. They go, ah, oh, there's plenty of money in there. But it's not theirs. Yeah, yeah exactly. Of yeah. yeah, exactly. If you've got things like tax, etc., mm. you absolutely should set, t set money aside for that. But also, as I say, I can't emphasize enough. Really understand what your running costs are. Yeah. What are those committed costs that are going out the door every week, every month, which you can't really vary? I mean, you obviously you can get rid of staff, you can reduce the fixed mm. costs, but understand what that run rate is and then make sure that you're using your your additional investment that variable money to get that return to help you build your business because you know the the bizarre, the kind of thing with with a growing business is typically if you're growing fast and you're not managing that cash uh, yeah. uh, equilibrium you consume cash yeah, because you spend it before you get it back from your customers and that's exactly yeah. how small businesses go bust because they don't anticipate what that cash burn is going to look like. Yeah. You hear startups now talking a lot about the um, cash uh, cash uh, route to break even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how far away am I from that time when actually I can, I can break even on a run rate basis? Because whilst I'm burning through cash every month, I'm yeah. always vulnerable that maybe those sales won't come in as quickly as I thought. Maybe I won't sign up as many customers as quickly as I thought I was going to. Yeah. And therefore you get vulnerable because you've got this run rate and you're suddenly running out, running out of cash. So you can't, you, you can't pay too much attention as yeah. a small business person to cash, you just can't. Give us your quick quote there again that you said. So a sale is a gift until the cash is received. Love it, yeah. love it. Quality. Thanks guys, Steve, great, thank to you so yeah. thank great, great to so see you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, thanks so much.